It's live on KEXP 90.3 FM, KEXP.org, and the KEXP streaming apps. I am Kid Hops, and thanks to your donor support of KEXP, independent nonprofit radio, we have in session Easy Star All Stars. I'm an alligator. I'm the mama papa coming for you. I'm the space invader. I'll be your rock and rolling bitch for you. Keep your mouth shut. You're squawking like a big monkey bird. And I'm busting out my brain. 
XP Live in session with Easy Star All Stars.
Easy Star All Stars live in session on listener powered 90.3 KEXP and the KEXP streaming apps.
live on KEXP, Easy Star All Stars, in session on listener powered KEXP Seattle, 90.3 FM, and worldwide KEXP.org and the KEXP streaming apps. Many, many thanks to all of our worldwide donors who make live in studio sessions like this possible. Incredible, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. I have a whole heap of questions for you all. Um, if I've done my math right, uh, this latest Ziggy Stardub album dropping in 2023 marks 20 years of Easy Star All Stars recordings. Is that right? Have I, have I done that right? Dub Side of the Moon dropped in 2003. Is that right? That's right. Holy moly. I mean, that's like 20 years of Easy Star All Stars how many of you in this room today have played across all of those albums? I guess it would just be uh, Ivan Katz, the drummer, and myself, Jenny Hill, on sax. Okay. We're at the original show at BB King's in New York City. Yeah, 2003, yeah. The original session that I did, I went to a warehouse in um, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, at like midnight, and <laughs> the producers were there, Michael G. and uh, Victor. And we just like, they wanted the exact uh, duplication of all the Pink Floyd sax solos. And I was totally against that. I go, no way, I want to do my own solos. And they were like, no, no, we're recreating this whole vibe. So you have to do basically a, a recreation over a reggae dub foundation of all the sax solos from Dark Side of the Moon. Incredible. But I mean, that was something that was really jumping out at me in this session together today you know, these aren't reggae covers. These are reggae adaptations, you know? I mean, these bass lines have been tweaked and twisted. There's additional uh, lyrical components, new verses. Uh, talk to me a little bit. I mean, as, as you are choosing albums to adapt into a reggae framework, what are some of the considerations that come into play? Yeah, I, I'll talk on that. I think... Um it could be, you know, from any genre. I think the idea is it has to be something that is legendary, no matter what the genre is. So, so Michael Jackson mm -hmm. is legendary. Pink Floyd, something that's like anthem quality, right? Songs that we grew up on, you know, from any genre. Pink Floyd, Michael Jackson, David Bowie, The Beatles, mm -hmm. Radiohead. You know, um, I think the fun idea behind it are taking these songs that people are really familiar with and they know them a certain way and they're hearing that same melody but coming across with a reggae foundation. And then the reggae groove is like very infectious. So it kind of um, brings that anthem to you in this kind of new mantra, kind of hypnotic way. And I think that's what calls it in. So it's going to call in people that love the music already, you know, those songs, those original versions. But then it's also going to call in people that didn't even really listen to Pink Floyd or David Bowie or, you know, and be like, oh, they're reggae lovers. But they're like, now it's the first time I'm enjoying um, David Bowie because it's a reggae groove. Related to that notion, I mean, I'm hearing, you, I mean, you guys are versioning classic bass lines. I was hearing some, you know, classic Studio One bass lines in there, Ross. Yeah, so, so the producer, Michael G., um, it'd be great if he was here to speak. That's one of his, part of his brilliance is he likes to kind of tease you and quote these, like, classic bass lines and adapt them into the songs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely coming through in the mix, for sure. Ross Droppa on bass yes. and Ivan on drums. How long have you two been playing together? Because you two are, like, Rhythm twins over there. <laughs> yes, how long have been like? Yeah, me, me and Drop have been playing together a couple decades. Yeah, 2012, I think. Yeah. No, even even Before even longer, yeah. really, yeah. because well, New York, in New York, right? On the New York scene. Yeah. No, we with Ivan. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, yeah, in yeah. this band, 2012, but on the New York scene, I, I started playing with Drop in the 90s. You know, because um, New York City, we're New York City based band, right? Even though people come from far, we have, you know. One of the things that's great about New York City is 
it brings people from all over the world, and that's how somebody like me would connect with the Jamaican community. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people came from a big Jamaican music scene that kind of was really percolating the 80s and 90s in the New York City. And that's how I met Ross Trapper, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and uh, a lot of people in this room. You know, so that's like that New York City reggae scene. So you guys have been playing together since the 90s. That's right. It shows. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. sound great together, man. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, do you find, so he, here's a question that I have for you. And I don't know exactly how this question is going to land. <laughs> um, is there a risk in focusing your efforts on adapting tried and tested albums? Is there a risk on missing an opportunity to address contemporary topics, or is there a timelessness about the albums that you choose that those messages of social justice, love, equality are still present, even though it's a recording from the 60s originally that you're versioning in 2023? Well, if you look at the um, Us and Them from Pink Floyd, it's all about why are we at war? Us and them, and you can see that reflected today with you know Russia and um, how they invaded. So I don't know. I feel like some of the lyrics are just have, the social problems have not been solved. Let's put it that way. So we're still working to solve all these issues. Yeah. So the lyrics work. Forward. Yeah. So there's a timelessness about the albums that you're settling upon to to record and re-record. Um, we, you know, we've touched on the albums that inspire you to adapt them. But what about the reggae artists that are inspiring you all to record and perform in, in the manner that you perform? Do you have some favorites? Are there some particular um, combinations of musicians that just really stand out to you that have inspired you to pursue this career? I mean, for me personally, I could say like, People like Oswald, Steel Pulse, Rankin Toyin, U Roy, Prince Jasbo, like these DJs and the bands, like Third World, like there's a bunch of them. I could I could go on forever, but these these bands and these uh DJs kind of help me mold my my own style. I would like to say it's my own individual style and kind of help me find my voice mm-hmm. as a singer and a toaster stuff so yeah man it's like a lot of a lot of the bands from like the 70s 80s and a lot of the dj them from the early 80s like i mentioned yellow yeah. man toy and yeah, yeah. I, I could go on josie wells i could go on you know what i mean but that's a very specific period of time that's yeah. like you know 79 to like 82 i'm on and, a rubber dub era man yeah exactly <laughs> so like that's really the thing that's standing out for you because mm-hmm. i hear it in your voice oh you know, yeah i hear I'm it in your delivery highly influenced by that era that's like my favorite era of reggae music what is it about that era that you feel cuz i feel like those tunes still stand up today you know they I mean, just they well, don't age i mean well my father being a selector that was the stuff that he was playing around me when i was a youth you know and then just not only just the sound of the music but the aesthetics you know like i said he was a selector so you know he was stringing up sound and then like I said, the aesthetics, you know, mind them wearing the clock boots and, you know, the, the beaver and all that. Like, that, I just admire that. Like, you see that style a lot in movies like Rockers and Bobby Lyon and Countryman. Like, these movies, you see them a lot. You see that style a lot in those movies. So it's like that's the main thing that, like, I'm influenced by when it comes to that era. It just has a, a, a very special golden sound. Like, I do my best to not try to, like, replicate it, but, like, do it the best that I can in, in my own way and still keep it modern, you know? Joanne, what about you? In your vocal stylings, are, are, there, are there artists in the Jamaican songbooks that, that have well, influenced you? Um, I am drawn to all soul music. And if you're not careful, you can limit your thoughts into thinking that soul music is only R&B, but it's not. I find there's so many amazing soul singers in the reggae field. So singers like Barris Hammond, Dennis Brown, uh, Marcia Griffiths. I, got, I was fortunate um, in my career to work with a 
very talented artist, uh, Diana King, um, who's also a singer and a DJ. Um, there's so many different artists that have helped me understand the way to interpret soul singing in different genres. So those are those to name a few. Thank you. Don't forget the famous Jamaican horn sections. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite Jamaican trombonist? Oh, man. You have to be up there between Rico and Vin Gordon. You know, of course, Don Drummond is the king, the first one. I got mad love for Dean Frazier, of course. Absolutely. I've got mad love for Nambo Robinson. Right, I Nambo? Love Nambo. Oh, Taxi Game. Yeah. yeah. He was the best. Oh, yeah. Roland Alfonso. You know. Oh, man. Amber Robinson, Peter Madden. Glenda Costa. <laughs> <laughs> the I mean, I'm so on. thankful that the Jamaican reggae scene uh, needed horns back in the day, and then, Brooks. you know, now we have yeah. horns. Because mm -hmm. so many modern genres of music don't use live brass. If you think about it, today's music. So, you know, it's great to be a part of the scene. That's a really good point. Yeah. Um, I had kind of just taken that for granted, and as someone, I, my primary instrument is trombone as well. Ooh. So um, it's... Uh, it's always a joy to have bands roll through the studio that travel with a horn section. Um, and it's an absolute joy to have you in the studio here. As fans want to keep up with your movements uh, across the planet, what is the best way to do that? How do, how do folks keep up with all things Easy Star All Stars? Well, like the kids be saying these days, catch me on IG. <laughs> <laughs> At Easy Star All Stars, and okay. that's the best way you can find out where we're gonna be at, what we're doing next, and all that groovy stuff. I respect it. I'm gonna call Michael G. Yeah, man. It is an absolute pleasure and joy to have you all in the studio today, and I'm very, very grateful that you made space to stop by and play some tunes. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Come Thanks for having us live on KEXP. It's Easy Star All Stars. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.